So now, we're going to do another step-by-step -step build of a circuit. Again, we're using the op-amp as a comparator, but now it is an inverting comparator. So that means our signal is going to the inverting input, minus right there. Our reference voltage, which is relatively fixed, it's fixed as long as the supply voltage uh, stays exactly the same, uh, is going to our non-inverting input plus right there. The output always wants to be more like the non-inverting input than the inverting input. So since our signal is going there, the output is going to want to be the opposite of it. And uh, we're just doing a comparison. Therefore, it gets as close to the positive supply rail for a high output as it can. And it gets as close to the negative rail for a low output as it can. So let's get to it. We need the integrated circuit. So I got uh, this integrated circuit out of a kit that I can't see where I put right now. Um, so we won't worry about that, but it is a kit with a bunch of integrated uh, circuits. So um, I probably got to move the light over here and uh, you need to read uh, the part number. So I got the divot to the left right there, which is the top of the component. But there you can see LM358. So this is not written terribly great uh, right there. There we go. Um, but I can see that with my bare eye. Uh, P at the end um, should mean that it's an improved version from the original. They started making these a long time ago and um, when they got better at making them you know they they had better characteristics and therefore they probably add the P there to let you know that so that's typically what that letter at the end means and um, there might be other modifications where they might use a different letter so here we have it on the board we need to uh, power it so you can see that on the schematic one thing I forgot to mention recently is that not all schematics will show the power pins, but you always have to power the integrated circuit. Uh, be aware of that. So learn where the power pins are. The kit that I got this from um, shows shows that. Oh, there's the kit right there. So it uh, shows it right on there. That's the first thing you should do is uh, uh, power it and then work from there. You should not leave um, unused uh, circuitry, the inputs mostly. You leave the output alone. Um, just floating, although uh, it's okay. Um, for demonstration circuits. We're just leaving it floating. I believe what you want to do is wire the output to the inverting input right there and then uh, put the uh, non-inverting input to ground, making it a voltage follower where the output connects to ground as good as it can. But I always check the data sheet for the particular component you're using to uh, see what to use with unused input. So let's get back to this. We have it powered right there and um, we might as well do our output since uh, that's going to be up higher right there. So what I like to do is have a red LED light up when the output is high. So it's not lighting up because it's red and the output's high. That's just how I have it wired up. I use a red LED to light up when the output is high. And uh, we got a lower value resistor, 220 ohms, because we need a fair amount of current. And usually integrated circuits are worse at providing a high output than a low output. And then a blue LED, I like to light up when the output connects to ground. And again, it does a better job connecting to ground. And uh, blue LEDs are brighter than red LEDs. So higher value resistor right there. We'll get their brightnesses, you know, somewhat close. And um, actually, um, I probably should use a lower value uh, resistor. We're only getting like 3.5 volts out um, when the output is high and um, the red LED drops a couple volts. But uh, we're not gonna worry about that too much. I made an extra video where I showed the uh, measurements. And then uh, with the blue LED, we only got like one volt um, instead of zero volts at uh, the output. Without the blue LED, then we uh, get uh, zero volts. So we won't uh, worry about that too much in this video. Just be aware of, we're not getting a full five volts, not getting a full zero volts which uh, you got to be aware of if you are making a circuit that is crucial. You get the full supply voltage. You would actually amplify this output in order to do so. Again, not going to worry about this video too much. So blue LED, I switched the order. I put the blue LED to the positive supply right there. Main thing is the long lead, the anode, needs to go towards the positive supply. Short lead, the cathode, needs to go to the output. So you can see that right there. Short lead, the cathode is up one spot to the resistor which is headed to the output. Long lead anode is going over to that jumper. And uh, with the red LED, I like to uh, wire it this way. This is how I prefer to wire things when I got enough space and everything. Long lead the anode on top, short lead the cathode, going to the negative supply right there, ground, zero volts. 
and um, so I swapped their positions but again short lead the cathode where that bar is goes to the negative supply long lead the anode uh, to the output doesn't matter the order with the resistor resistors can go in either direction so you can see red red I know this is 220 right there at least the first two start with 2 2 but uh, 220 is the only resistor value actually no that is the wrong resistor now I see red red right there so I wasn't looking close enough there you go so we uh, will put the resistor to the long lead the anode and then that's coming to the output so that lets us know if the red LED lights up we're getting power from the positive supply again it's going through transistors so it's not a perfect uh, connection and uh, you never get the full supply voltage we're going to use five volts uh, we'll never get five volts we'll always fall at least a volt and a half short and then it'll go down a little bit more even uh, go down a little bit more than that with a load I should say so there we go that's our output so now let's get to the actual comparator part of the circuit we'll do our uh, trim pot uh, first so that's a higher connection up there that's the inverting input pin number two down there as you can see on here uh, one two and then three is the non-inverting input they're lining up nicely with the schematic sometimes they put the plus above the minus on the schematic uh, if it will fit better or whatever in the drawing uh, but the physical component the pin layouts always the same look at the data sheet for the uh, pin layout and uh, as I showed before the pin layout is on the kit where I got that so um, we got the positive and negative there this is a fixed resistor of 10,000 ohms it's not a perfect 10,000 ohms um, uh, but that doesn't matter uh, there's a wiper that slides across that resistive element making it a voltage divider when you use all three pins you can just use uh, one of the resistive ends and the wiper to make a variable resistor if you want and then you leave the other one either not connected to anything or you can connect it to the output in case the output fails then uh, that row will have the maximum uh, resistance somewhere around 10,000 something to be aware of so this is our changing uh, voltage we need to compare that changing voltage with, uh, in this case, a fixed voltage right there. It doesn't have to be fixed, um, but uh, that's the easiest way to go. And uh, so this is going to the non-inverting input. And uh, so the output is going to be more like this voltage, which is fixed, than our changing uh, voltage. So there's 10,000 ohm resistor. I put it backwards if you're looking at the color code. Um, this one I'll put in the right way. doesn't matter which direction uh, resistors go, but if you're making a permanent circuit especially, you should probably uh, align them so that you can read the color code more easy. But in uh, any case, there we go. So that is it for the circuit. It's uh, pretty simple and straightforward right there. But I'm making this video for absolute beginners, so I explain things a little bit uh, more. So now let's get to actually powering the circuit. So now we got the power supply set to 5 volts. Always make sure you check that it's actually 5 volts when you're using an adjustable power supply. Uh, if you're gonna be using five volts, make sure it's the voltage you want. And um, best to turn the output off. Best to also limit the maximum current to uh, less than uh, what the circuit um, would need. So these LEDs should never have more than about 20 milliamps of current flowing through them. You should actually stay below that, um, but 20 milliamps is the maximum. And um, therefore, I set that maximum on there. So we will not uh, damage anything if I make a wrong connection where more than 20 or 20 milliamps of current flows I should say so in any case there we go we turn it on so now you can see trim pot is pointing towards the positive supply that's also where the blue LED is coming from so there's no voltage difference there so we know the output is connected to ground as good as it can do pretty uh, straightforward right there I'm going to turn the trim pot to the negative supply main thing is half waypoint that's the voltage we set so we can use different value resistors to adjust uh, where the actual uh, voltage is and then you would use something else um, a variable resistor that maybe its resistance changes with light plus a fixed value resistor right there a light dependent resistor and a fixed resistor uh, to change the voltage based on a light level and you put the light dependent resistor on the upper or lower side uh, depending on how you want it to respond to light more or less resistance thus more or less output voltage um, but here we're just using a trim pot to simulate that so we're more than halfway towards the negative supply right there low and again the red LED is coming from the negative supply right there as far as the output is concerned and therefore the output has to come from the positive supply high right there not a direct connection again we actually lose a significant amount of voltage I made a long video where we took those uh, 
uh, multimeter measurements. Output's going to do the same uh, whether we have uh, inverting or not inverting right there. Um, so be aware of that. But in any case, there you can see. We got a lot less current than we expect at 5 volts because we're not getting as much current out, uh, as much voltage at the output as we want. It's probably about about 3.5, not spot on. I think even a little bit less than that. And then uh, we looked uh, right now, instead of uh, zero volts, so that we have a five volt difference, we actually have about one volt probably at uh, the output right now. Red LED drops about uh, three volts. And therefore, we only got probably about a volt, maybe a little bit more, across the 1000 ohm resistor setting the current. And it actually dipped down to a one milliamp of current right there. But remember, the, these uh, other resistors, and the trim pot, which is a variable resistor, they have current going through them as well. So probably a little bit less than two milliamps total, but probably close to one milliamp through the blue LED. Stuff we could measure, uh, but again, not going to. We're gonna keep this simple, just show how this works. So hope you enjoyed. Make sure you check out one of the other videos I posted to the screen and check out the links down below. They all help out a lot. I'll see you in the next video.